taking a really long time. I don't know why. It doesn't normally take this long. Oh, I know why, because you have to turn the car on. Man, I'm an idiot. All right. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, and welcome back to Vic Drives. So I was going to take the vet out and do some, like, POV driving, because apparently that's a video that a lot of people like seeing. Um, but we are a little bit boxed in here, and I don't have the keys to these other two cars. So we're stuck inside the house today. But I figured I could take this time to kind of show you guys a couple of the things that are wrong with the vet and like they're simple things but then we'll dive into the driver information control panel i don't remember what it's called it's called dic um which is inside the car behind the gauge cluster and i can show you kind of how we go through the, that system so anyways one of the first issues that exists on the vet I'll go through these really quickly and then I'll go a little bit more in depth when I'm actually fixing them so that it, it doesn't seem like it's a giant waste of time. So the first issue is with this headlight housing right here. I'm gonna insert a clip uh, of it just opening and closing so you guys can hear uh, the issue. So basically what's happening is either the gearing in here um, they are just plastic gears, so there is a chance that the gearing in there is, you know, kind of wearing and binding, um, in which case I'd have to replace that. But the more likely cause is really bad panel gap, or I guess lack thereof. Um, so the previous owner said that he took this piece off uh, because he was replacing this bulb down here, and that requires you to get underneath this assembly. Um, and I think he just did a really bad job of putting it back together. When you compare it with the other side, you can kind of see that it doesn't really line up the same. And then the second issue is on the passenger side here. So I noticed this on the test drive of the vehicle. Um, and it's a very simple adjustment that I just haven't gotten around to making yet, but we will do all that stuff. I think next week. So if you can see right down there, this is my passenger side window and there's a little bit of a gap between the weather ceiling and the actual glass. So what tends to happen is when you're driving at say like 65, 70 miles an hour, no faster because of course we always follow the speed limits, um, wind gets underneath here and then kind of like pulls the glass back a little bit and that gets really annoying really quickly so there are little adjustment screws underneath the doors um i don't even know how i would show these to you guys but basically you turn it one way the glass tilts in a little bit you turn it the other way the glass tilts out a little bit uh so basically it's a very minor adjustment and it should just get rid of that issue um, and then after that, there's an issue with the trunk. So here's my trunk. Um, we're gonna go ahead and try to open it. There's a button right down here. You push that and this should open, right? So you'd think. But as you can see, it kind of popped up, but not really enough to pick it up. And then when you close the door, it pops up. And the cause of this problem is probably these struts here. I've also heard that uh, lubricating these joints helps a little bit, so I just tried that. So I will update you on that situation in a little bit. Okay, so now that I've wasted half the video talking about stuff that's not even what the video was about in the first place, Let's get into the driver information control panel, I think it's called. Um, I gotta turn the car on, and I gotta flip you guys around, so just give me a second here. Actually... Gotta love it! Gotta love the noises! All right. 
All right, let me flip you around. Okay, so there's our beloved check engine light right over there. Um, I'm averaging 20.3 miles to the gallon. So we have these controls over here on the side. We have fuel, gauges, trip, options. E and M is English and metric, so we can like switch uh, the, I guess, uh, dimensions that we see. So we have miles per hour right there. If I hit E and M, it'll switch to kilometers per hour and my fuel will change as well. So we'll go back. Um, so I can flip through my instantaneous fuel economy, range, um, average fuel economy, and that's all the things that you get in fuel. When you go to gauges, it'll go through oil pressure, oil temperature, coolant temperature, battery voltage, and then trip will show you your odometer, uh, trip A, trip B. Um, I think this is like a timer, like a track timer of some sort that you can use. Uh, I haven't really experimented with that yet, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, average speed, oil life, well, that's interesting because it's definitely due for an oil change, so that's not 100% accurate. Um, and then what you can do is if you hold down the options button and hit the fuel button four times real quick, it goes into a diagnostics mode. So uh, it just goes through all of the systems in the car and tells you whether or not there are any codes. So you can see that next to some of the codes that have shown up, uh, there's a little H. If it doesn't show up here, I'll, uh, okay, right, so they, right there. So there's an H. H means that it was a history code, which means that it's something that showed up on the previous owner's, um, I guess, ownership. <laughs> and uh, he either dealt with it, which is why there isn't a check engine light for it, or um, he cleared it. So what you can do is this will either cycle through everything or I can control it by just pressing a button. So this is manual codes right here. So I can go four and it'll go to the next system or you can hit three and take it back to the previous system. And then if you hit one, no, nope, sorry, if you hit two, it'll go through the codes that are right there. So P0135 was a code that the previous owner got, which is why there's an H there. And the C indicates that that's the issue that I currently have as well, uh, which is the case because I scanned it and that's what I was given. Um, and that's really the only code that's there. There is a way to reset it. I believe you just uh, hold down the reset button, but I'm not going to be resetting it right now. Um, so then when you hit four, it goes into the next uh, systems and you can go in and see what the issues were. So if you didn't know what B0432 meant, you can now go look up B0432 and figure out what your issue is. And so that's that. And then when you want to hop back out, you just... Uh... Oh, here'd you go. Uh, you just hit five or you know, reset and then it'll let you back out and then you can go about doing your, going back to your business. Okay, so that's how you analyze your codes and figure out what's wrong with your car using the driver information control uh, within your C5 Corvette. But if you don't wanna do it that way or you'd rather see your codes on your phone so you can take a screenshot and then just you know research them there, uh, you can always plug in an OBD2 port. So I will really quickly show you how to do that. So I've shown you guys this before. It's a faux seal. It was like a $12 OBD2 scanner uh, that I bought like two or three years ago when I had an issue with the Merc. So uh, basically what you do in every single car, essentially, there is a port down here under the... Uh, let me turn on the flash real quick. So basically you get underneath your car. Um, so for the Corvette, the port is right over here. For the Merc, it's closer to right here. And for other cars, it'll be on like the other side over there somewhere. But essentially you grab this guy, you toss him in there, it goes through like a little bit of a power sequence and then that red light means that it's turned on. So now we'll switch over to my phone and I'll show you guys the rest. Okay, so basically now that the OBD2 scanner is plugged in, you can see the red light right down there. 
what we're going to do is we're going to connect to Wi-Fi OBD2 in my networks here. And you can see that that turns on. And then we're going to go into EOBD Facile, which is just the app that I use. So hopefully down there you can see that the lights have changed um, once I hit connect here. So you see how the lights are changing, and now I can go through here, select C5 Corvette, do all that, and it'll go through like a little bit of an initialization. This is a really old um, controller, mind you, so it might be on its last legs here. Um, but once the vehicle connection and whatever goes through, the lights should all go solid here. taking a really long time. I don't know why. It doesn't normally take this long. Oh, I know why, because you have to turn the car on. Man, I'm an idiot. All right, hold on. Okay, so what you gotta do after you plug in your tool is turn your car on. Once you've turned your car on, So that's my bad there. I uh, completely forgot to turn on the car, which is like the second step. So basically, to recap, in case you got lost somewhere there, the steps are plug your tool into your OBD2 scanner port, open your app, turn on your car, uh, connect via your phone to your Wi-Fi thing, and then press read codes. And so my issue is the P0135 on this specific car, but you might have other issues. You might have other things that you need to deal with. And that's the easiest way to diagnose your issues. So hopefully this helped. And if you enjoyed the video, then definitely be sure to leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, hopefully we'll be driving this thing a lot more soon. Weather's been kind of iffy. Had a couple rainy days. Someone said snow next week, so I'm not 100% sure but I am itching to get it out of there so soon, hopefully. All right, well, I will catch you guys in the next one. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week or weekend or whenever you are watching this. With that, I will talk to you guys next time.